Hi there, this is a video uh, to help demonstrate some of the uh, vision troubleshooting techniques that uh, you might have to run into, especially dealing with uh, Shocker NXTIs. This video in particular is geared toward the overexposure problem, which is a very particular issue that Shocker NXTs have, or in this case, uh, Shocker SFT that has been modified to use uh, NXTIs, beam brake eyes, uh, like this uh, purple gun here, it belongs to me. To start, I will say that there's two different types of uh, troubleshooting problems that you can run into with shockers. The first problem is the gun just fires all the time regardless of whether or not there's paint in the chamber. Uh, you can have paint in there or not and it just lets you fire. Uh, that's probably the more common problem, but it's usually pretty easy to fix because it just basically means there's a break in the circuit. There's a break on the wire harness, there's a bent pin inside the connector perhaps, uh, if you have the eyes unplugged, that's what will happen is there's a break in the circuit and it'll let you fire all the time. If you have the little silver contact facing the wrong direction, it'll also do that. The silver contacts have to face away from the marker body, as you can see here. So if you were to plug this in upside down, you'll end up with a gun that just fires all the time. Now, like I said, that's probably the more common problem, but the purpose of this video is actually to uh, discuss the overexposure problem that uh, NXTIs have in particular. What this problem is, is it's basically the uh, emitter eye, which you can see right here in this gun. The emitter eye is so bright that when you put a ball in the chamber, the, uh, the light actually bounces around it and gets detected by the uh, detecting eye on the other side of the marker. Uh, so it's like whether or not you have a ball loaded, the gun thinks you don't have a ball loaded and it doesn't let you shoot. This problem, I find, uh, most often affects shockers that have bright colored bodies, such as a silver or a gray or a pewter or maybe an orange or a red. Uh, the problem with those is that the light can go inside of the little hole that, it, that it's uh, sitting inside of and it just bounces around. So if you have a darker colored gun, like a black or a green or a blue or a purple, those markers usually don't have that issue because the uh, colors are a little bit more absorbent to the infrared spectrum. Now, that brings me to the next point, which is that you might be saying to yourself, oh, how is it, how is it that bright? I don't understand. Well, I got a little LED here. Basically, this, this emitter here is what we call a super bright emitter because the light that it spits out is, is almost like blindingly bright. It's just like, oh, I get this backwards. It's just like this blue one that I have right here, where if you look directly into it, it's incredibly bright. Well, this, this is exactly what the little LED uh, looks like on the inside of the gun, except that it's infrared, so you can't actually see it with the unaided eye. So you gotta sort of use your imagination on that and just believe me that it's incredibly bright. And that kind of leads me to explain how, you know, the light goes through the ball and just bounces all around it and still gets detected. Uh, the issue can also be observed if you have worn out detents because the ball will tip forward or if you have a really big wide open face bolt and the ball tips backward that will assist the light in bouncing around the ball and being detected on the other side. Uh, those are all bad things, you don't want that to happen. The most common fix for this is something that I only see with uh, bright colored markers like gray or silver or pewter. The issue there, the issue there is the uh, little slot that the eye sits in is so reflective that the light's able to kind of refract its way through there. Uh, so the fix is you take a sharpie like this one here and you use it to actually color in the inside there. Uh, obviously with this one, this is this is raw aluminum, so it's as shiny as it can possibly be. I mean, it's silver, it's refractive, all that. Uh, so this would be a good candidate. I'm not going to demonstrate that, I'm going to demonstrate something else. The other fix for this problem is to also, again, use a Sharpie and you want to color in the outside area of the emitter. You don't want to color in the top because that will blot out the light entirely. You want to color in the outside. So I'm going to reposition the camera and uh, try to demonstrate this. So hold on one second. Okay, so what I've done here, I've taped the top of the eye down to this piece of metal that I'm using and I'm going to demonstrate what you have to do. The Sharpie that I'm using, as you can see, uh, has a very fine tip. It comes to 
a very sharp point, that's what you want. You don't want one that's rounded off because you're gonna just get marker ink all over the place. But what you wanna do is color in the outside of the eye like this. You can see here that the top of the eye is not being touched. I'm only going around the outside. And what that's gonna do is it's going to reduce the amount of light that's able to be uh, emitted by this LED. And again, you can't see the light because it's infrared, but obviously it's there because that's how the gun works. So when you get done with this, going all the way around the outside, the external angle is gonna be dark, but if you look at it from straight on the top, it's gonna to be clear. Now, if you happen to get too much ink on the, on the eye, you can uh, try to use like a napkin or something to clean off the top and that'll actually make it so the light actually gets out. You don't want to just cover it all up because that just prevents any light from getting out of the emitter and that's not what you want. So at that point, you take your eyes, reinstall inside the gun, and then hopefully you won't have that issue anymore. Like I said, when you stick your finger inside the chamber, you should be able to simulate a ball, and when you pull the trigger, it should fire like that. If it doesn't fire, then you've got an issue as long as you have a ball loaded. Uh, that's basically my fix for it. Now, like I said, you can also color in the inside of the hole that it goes inside of. Oops, wrong one, that one. Color in the inside of the hole that it goes inside of, and uh, that'll also probably help, but I don't know if that'll fix it by itself. But I've seen a couple, couple discussions where people were describing their way to fix this, which involved let me zoom out. Their way to fix this, which involved uh, kind of repositioning the eye a little bit and then tightening down the screw, or in a case where they just kind of left the screw floating and left the eye floating, and I think that helped to adjust the angle of the eye so they actually weren't uh, facing each other perfectly. They were slightly, slightly angled, and when that happens, the light wasn't being quite as intense on the detector side. But uh, hopefully this video helped you out. Uh, like I said, it's a pretty easy modification to perform as long as you just got to be careful, go slow, be nice and gentle with it. Obviously, the eyes are fragile, so you don't want to be pounding on it with a Sharpie or anything like that. But uh, I think that's about it. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I think that's it. Okay, bye.